feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise. I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ the truth that lives in me. God is my health. I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all. I know no fear since God and love and truth are here in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Fellowship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Fellowship. How are you feeling? Take your time. Take your time. We're basking in his presence. Just take a deep breath. Again, what a relief it is to rest in God's presence. Just to let go, let go of the world, let go of problems, let go of everything and give everything to Lord in prayer. As you say, peace be still, peace be still in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Welcome, people. How you doing? How you doing? Um, I feel, thank you so much. Thank you for your prayers. I feel so much better. I tell you, when that sciatic nerve hit me, I felt like a, a knife was stabbing me in the back. And I told Jonna, I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to get up and do fellowship. I could barely walk. I said, she said, I, I said, she said, I think, the, I, I think the fellowship will understand. <laughs> Because I was I was praising God through the pain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I'm doing my 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 pain. Can't feel my praise. Can't stop my praise. I was praising and hurting. Praising and hurting. <laughs> so well, thank you guys so much for your prayers. I feel much better. You know, once once that hits like that, it takes a, a day or two for you to forget where the pain was because it, it it hurts so intensely for for you know so long when it stops hurting. You still think it's hurting. <laughs> Amen. So I just want to take a moment to thank everyone for your prayers uh, for during that time. And I'm back. Amen. Praise God. Here we go to King, King of Biz. King of Biz Thursday. Amen. Praise God. Our, our favorite time of the week where we get to share testimonies based on this week's lessons. And we got we got some great type topics because Monday, Monday we talked about we talked about people who love love you to death. Monday was people who love you to death by speaking venom, acting like they support you. I, I'm so I'm so sad you're dying. Excuse me, don't tell me I'm dying. I'm living. I, by by his stripe I'm healed. So people who love you to death, they come and give you these statements, making it look like they're supporting you, but the statement itself is negative. So that's that's what Monday was. And then Tuesday, Tuesday was about protecting your spiritual circle or your spiritual bubble, the things and people around you, making sure you pay attention to who is in your circle, who is in your bubble, to make sure you don't have any naysayers, any house enemies, any naysayers or unbelievers who are against what you stand for, to make sure those people are not in your circle. And that was, that was Tuesday's lesson. So that brings the, the question for the day for Kingdom Biz Thursday, have you ever found yourself have you ever found yourself in a circle, the wrong circle, and you said to yourself, I am in the wrong place. I got to get out of here. Have you ever found yourself in the wrong crowd, the wrong circle of people, wrong circle of friends, even friends, and said, I'm in the wrong place. I got to get out of here. And when you, how did you recognize it? And then how did you leave? See, it's important to leave the right way. If you leave the wrong way, They'll talk about you for the rest of your life. <laughs> it don't 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 leave the wrong people being being judgmental. 
because that judgmental attitude will follow you for the rest of your life. But you just be just just courteously leave the circle and, and let them think I got. I, I'm sorry, guys. I gotta go. And see, in that way, I gotta go is general. But when you say something judgmental, they get upset. It will come after you for that judgmental statement. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So that's what you're sharing. Amen. Praise God. Deanna, oh, come on, Deanna. Talk to me, Deanna. I mean, amen. Thank you, Jonna. Thank you, Jonna. The wrong crowd. We don't, we don't, we, we don't pierce. See, people forget that once you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's not just the word of God that protects you. You must protect your circle. It's hard enough to walk the will of God and live the word of God. But when you have people in your circle against what you believe, it makes walking the will of God even harder. Amen. Snurks, it, it took us, it took us years to realize it, it took us years to realize it because it was different than the negativity at home. Unfortunately, it took a long time to leave. That's it, it snurks. It, that's how we learn. Snurks, and don't even blame yourself because now you you did leave. The point, the point, Snurks, is you did leave eventually. It may have taken a long time to realize it. But in the end, you did leave. And that's the victory right there. You So you still got the victory. And sometimes the revelations take a long time. Sometimes we're in a situation for so long, we don't, we don't really understand we're in the wrong place. So you have to understand where the right place is first to understand you're in the wrong place. That's the big thing right there. Sometimes you have to understand what is the right place. And then you understand when you're in the wrong place. But if you don't have a definition of what the right place is, you could be in the wrong place for years and don't even recognize it because you had no idea what the right place is. Amen. Uh, Snurks, I guess it was a lesser of two evils. They would they would ridicule us for being optimistic and say that we had no reason for hope or joy. We used to command, we, we, we used to command good days. Amen. Amen. Call those things to be not. See, that, that's a perfect sign, Snurks. That's a perfect sign of being attacked by the world. See, I love what you said. They, they, they had no. They say you had no reason for hope or joy because the love of the Lord is in you. They could not stand your anointing because when the joy of the Lord is in you, no matter what's going on, you're in the world but not of the world. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. And they resented your joy. Amen, Snurks. Thank you so much. That's exactly right. They resented your joy. Dana, I feel like I was I, I feel like I was used to used to a dysfunctional home environment. So I stayed in areas I shouldn't have. It was normal to be mistreated. Amen. Amen. That's a big one, Deanna. That's a big one. See, sometimes you're in a situation for so long, you make it real. Like like Deanna just said, sometimes you're in a situation for so long. You make it your reality and don't even try to get out because it's all you know. I remember some. I remember something that the Snurk said uh, when she first joined it, maybe a year later, and we were, she was starting to feel peace. I was starting to feel the peace of God. A Snurk, remember they said this, and, and, and Snurk said, "Peace feels so, so strange. I never felt this before," <laughs> and, and that was big. That, that, that was a big statement, Snurks. That was a big revelation because you actually said, I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember, but about year two after being with the fellowship, maybe a year, year and a half, and we were talking about peace. And you said, peace, I think I feel peace, but it's, it's so new. I've never felt it before because you had all those years of no peace, had no idea what peace was. So now you're feeling peace and it feels new because you never had peace or you never had joy. Because like Deanna said, is your mistreatment was so ingrained in you, you had no idea there was a better place. And you accepted the mistreatment as your norm. But once you realize, once you realize there's a better place in God, a place of peace, and the joy of the Lord is your strength, and all of a sudden you started to rewrite your reality. And that's where you are now. Praise God. That became your victory. It became your victory. Amen. Amen. You remember that? You remember Snakes? <laughs> Again, I feel like my biggest battle, my biggest battle is the flesh. Not wanting to accept the new reality. Amen, Diana. That is the biggest challenge right there. 
That is the biggest challenge right there. To rewrite the old tapes. Rewrite the old tapes. Behold all old things. What? Are in the past now. All things become new. You're now focusing, Deanna, on all things become new. All things have passed away. Let it go. I know it stays in your mind. Let it go. All things have passed away. Let it go. And just focus on all things become new. You'll never forget. You'll never forget the past. You'll never forget the past. It made you who you are right now. Your past is a part of who you are right now. So it didn't make you stronger. Yes, you remember it, but don't focus on it. It made you stronger. You survived. Now let it go. You're stronger. You survived. Now let it go. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Snurks, but God, I can now, I can discern its absence immediately. Amen. You, 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 you can discern your lack of peace, Snurks. Are you talking about your lack of peace? You can discern your lack of peace immediately and go back right back to it. Be still. Be still. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Margo, Margo, this is a blessing and definitely applies to my life. Amen, Margo. Thank you, sister. Thank you for sharing. I'm, I'm glad it's a blessing. See, these are big topics. These are big topics because your past is still part of you. And sometimes we, have, we can't discern what part of you to keep and what part of you to let go. Give me a thumbs up if some people have that trouble. If you're trying to write a new new tape, of new, a new you, sometimes you have trouble discerning what part of your past to keep and what part to let go. Let me let me answer that for you. Let, let me answer that for you. If the part of you in the past is trying to pull you away from God, that's the part to let go. See, in your past, at some point, you were strong enough to get away from it. Keep that. That strength is what made you now. The, the strength to get away from whatever it is, whatever, whatever situation was. That strength in the past that led you to who you are now. Keep that. That strength is now in you, and God will use that strength to take you to another level. Now, the other stuff that caused you to leave it, keep the other stuff in the past, under your under foot, under control. You'll, ne you'll never forget it, but don't let it control you. You'll never forget it, but don't let the past control you. That's the key right there. The past can ruin your life if you don't let go. The past will change the way you look at life if you don't let go. See, you got to let go to be able to survive the new you. And that, that's, what it's, that's the battle right there. That is the battle right there. Amen. Uh, Deanna. I fight myself both most days. You see, Deanna, that's what it is. The battlefield's right here, Deanna. The battlefield is in your mind. And that's why you feel like you're fighting yourself. The old you is fighting the new you. The flesh you is fighting the spiritual you. And that's why we're fasting and praying right now. This is day, day 18, Deanna? Day, let's see. It's 19. 19. This is day 19. Oh, day nine, what do you know? Wait a minute. 17, 18, 19. No, no, no. It's day 20, isn't it? So 16, Monday was 17, 18, 19, yeah. No, see, I forgot because Wednesday we didn't meet. This is day 20. This is day 20. We're 20 days into Lent. 20 days into Lent. And so that's use this time of fasting and praying, Deanna, and all those who are trying to rewrite the past and keep the past under control. That's what we focus on. Keep the past in the past and don't let the past control you. All things become new. And now you're a new you. Now the new you loves the Lord. The new you praises and worships. The new you follows the word of God. That's the new you. And any part of your past that tries to pull you back to who you used to be, keep that under, keep that under your foot. Too late. Too late. I've come too far to turn back now. I've come too far to turn back and go back to who I used to be. Walk in victory. Walk in your victory. Stay there. Amen. 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 That's right. We are overcomers. Exactly. We are overcomers. And you work too hard. You work too hard to become an overcomer. And don't go back. We say everything. Don't go back. Let it go. Let God have it. And now he takes it. And you keep it under your foot. Amen. 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 
the, the lack of peace, Snurks, that's what you recognize, the lack of peace. And as soon as you recognize you lost your peace, what do you do? Peace be still. Speak peace. As soon as you realize you lost your peace, speak peace. Peace be still in Jesus' name. Peace be still for about 30 seconds. And you'll feel the peace of God come back over you. So whenever you feel you lost your peace, pray for it. Peace be still in Jesus' name. Peace be still. And you just keep saying it until you feel the peace of God come over and take over that lack of peace. And the peace of God comes over you again and returns. Amen. Amen. Uh, Bro Don, Sheriff Don, my wife and I visited a non denominational church uh, one Sunday, and the whole service was videotapes of missions and three collections for these missions, but no Bible, no praise, and no prayer. So, so Don, Don, all they focused on was the missions and no word. See, the mission is the extension of the word, but God, God is love. God is love, giving heart. All that's a part of God, but the word of God must be taught to refill you, to be able to be a giver in missions and charities. But it's receiving the word of God and receiving a, a, a lesson to remind us about God's goodness. Amen, Don. So I'm glad you shared it. We left unfulfilled and we knew it was <laughs> it was not right. It, it wasn't right. You knew it wasn't right, Don, because you were looking for the word. You went to church look over the word and all they talked about were the missions and no word and and you came there to receive the word right Don? you came to receive the word of god and you left empty because no word was taught to refill your heart with the word of god see that's that's that and, and many times when you visit a church at that times you can feel if that church ministers to your heart see everybody loves a different type of church see some churches use music some don't use music. Some people believe, believe in shouting and praising God and jumping up and down. Some people are very quiet. So you go to church based on where you can get the word in you the most. We, the reason you choose a church is to be fed by that particular church, to be refilled and renewed by the word of God. And like Don said, if you leave the church unfed, you're in the wrong place. That's right now. I can, no matter what the church is. If you leave the church unfed, you are in the wrong place. Because the purpose of the house of God is to go there and be fed the word of God. And to leave the church on fire, ready to attack the weak. Amen, Don? That's how you choose if you're in the right place. The, 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 the ministry should motivate you just to be on fire. Ready, I'm ready to use it. Lord, I'm ready to use this word. Lord, I can't wait to, to apply this. You leave the you leave this the lesson or the sermon, whatever, and you're on fire. Can't wait to use it. Because now you got empowered by the word of God and the sermon that day. Amen. 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 Uh Snurks. Uh Snurks, what is 20 Snurks? Uh, you may have said something. Did you say something? Day 20 of Lent. Oh yes, day 20. Yes, yes. Day 20, Snurks. Day 20. 40 days in between. 40 days of victory, and right now we're at day 20. So keep speaking every day. 40 days of victory, right now in day 20. 20 days of 40, fasting, Lent, and pray, uh, fasting, praying for Lent. 40 days of victory, and this is day 20. Amen. 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 Amen, Don. Amen, Don. You got that right, Don? Amen. Uh, Glenda, I worked too hard and too long to get to where I am now. To where I am now, and Lord, I am not turning back. <laughs> onwards in Jesus name that's right Glenda we work too hard to, to, to get to where we got right now too hard too many years of praising and praying too many years of just hanging on hanging on to God's unchanging hand to go back into a lost world lost so when you get when you got what you got each time you fast and pray it gets stronger keep that keep that improvement each time we pray like in january you got stronger now we're in lent fast and praying and you get even stronger and so whatever you have at the end of each fasting just take that and keep it don't go back to don't go back to where you were before the fast keep the strength you got in each fast and get stronger and stronger and closer and closer to the lord because each time you fast and pray you get closer and closer to god more peace more joy, more anointing, more blessings, because you're seeking His face every time you fast and pray. You're seeking to get closer and closer to the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Shiv Sheila. Okay. Any more? Any more sharing? And now, of course, the for, for my in my personal my personal self in college in college is where I really remembered having to remove myself from the wrong friends because in college those of you who remember in college you have all kinds of people in college and some people are living completely the wrong way and even before I was saved I recognized these friends are not the friends I should be around they were doing everything under the sun they were doing drugs and alcohol and partying and even before I was saved I just felt this energy like these people are crazy I can't hang I can't hang around this they are just first of all they're distracting my studies I'm in college they're distracting my focus in college and they're partying every night and they're womanizing and drinking and drugs I said wait a minute I'm on a scholarship I can't afford to lose my scholarship so these people I gotta I, I gotta get away because they're pulling me away at that time they're pulling me away from my focus my scholarship and later on the same energy is applied to keeping your focus on the Word of God. Amen? Don, Don, one blessing of social media is that we can be anywhere in the world live and praise and pray with people who care to, and together pray for our world. And it's a very special gift for these times. Amen, Don? You got that right. Matter of fact, I, and like I told you, OG ones through threes, way back when I first started the channel, I had, I had no idea the reach of social media. I, I thought I was just really praising and praying for the United States. I, I didn't really understand that the internet is worldwide until I started getting, like I told you before, a few years ago, I told you I had a young man who kept telling me, I, I, I wish I could say praise God, but my mother keeps telling me, shut that stuff off. My, my favorite story, I've said this several times, this young man, I think he was in his early 20s, but he lived with his mother, and he lived in Pakistan. And he kept saying, man, I just wish I could praise God, but I got to be quiet. I can't praise God. And that's why I found out. I said, where do you live? He said, Pakistan. And my mother keeps telling me, shut that stuff off. Shut that stuff off. And I won't do it because I love God. So he said, but I won't do it because I love God. So regardless of what his mother said, he turned on the, the channel whenever he could just say I love I love the Lord I love this I love this channel and he kept listening now fast forward about maybe eight months to a year later the same young man said Mr. Fitz me and my mother love your channel <laughs> that young man's fire jumped on his mother and now they were both listening to the channel so he didn't quit she thought it was junk but he kept on loving and praising God, and now she was watching the channel with him a year later. So don't tell me God can't jump off someone and onto someone else and save them. Because now his mother was on fire for the Lord. They, get, they told him at first to shut that stuff off. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The power of God. Amen. 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 Snurks, I never, I never understood why people let loose in college like that. And, and Snurks, you know why? Because sometimes people live in a very controlled environment at home. And when college comes, they go completely crazy the other way. So many times, I've seen this many times, the household was so strict in high school years. When they get to college, they rebel against everything they're taught not to do under a strict environment in high school. And they get to college and go completely crazy. Sin abound. <laughs> And that's why I really think that's the reason, Snurks. I think that's the reason. Amen. Amen, Donna. Amen. A true blessing. The way that we're able to reach around the world. Amen. Amen. No, uh, amen, Donna. Uh, no, no parents around. No rules. And first time independence. Big one, Donna. First time away from mom and dad in college. First time you're away from mom and dad. And now you're on your, you're on your own. Your own boss. To live like you want to live, and some people can't. Ha some people can't handle it, and they go completely crazy in college. Amen. 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 Uh, well done, uh, Mister. Uh, just know you have left your mark and helped our world. Your ministry has helped many. Uh, thank you, Sheriff Don. And that's that's what we're trying to do. You know, I I didn't really realize what we do here in this fellowship. 
I knew it was unique because the, the sunsets, I'm, I'm in the car and we do sunsets. I knew that, that the, the environment was different, but I didn't really realize what you just said, Don, the number of people who watch this channel, either some people watch because they were away from church because of hurt, church hurt. Some people don't have churches they like in their area. I mean, so many, I ask people, how did they find this channel? So many people had so many different reasons what drew them to this channel. And so that's when I really re recognize that God is using this channel and our ministry to reach those who cannot be reached in other ways for different reasons. So by being obedient to what God says do on the channel every day, I know the Holy Spirit knows exactly who needs to hear what and when by just doing what the Holy Spirit says and what to teach as the Holy Spirit says and when. And that way the Holy Spirit is in charge of everything I teach and when on this channel. Amen. And that's a true blessing. Amen, Brother Don. Thank you, thank you Brother Don. Thank you, Don. Again, my daughter will get mad if I tell her about an online Bible study and it's not for you. <laughs> it's an online Bible study and it's not for you. <laughs> oh, and it, oh, it, and it's not. Oh, I'm sorry. And hold on, Bible. And it's not you. She told me. Huh? Bible study is not yours. Oh, not, oh, oh, I got you. Oh, I got you. you okay, I got you. John, John just explained. I missed something. So my daughter would get mad if I tell her about an online Bible study and it's not you being me. She told me once, this ain't the one you listen to every day. <laughs> so, she, so she recognized you listen to a different Bible study. <laughs> hey, hey, Deanna, what you doing? Who you, who, what you doing? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Shame to tell the truth. Busted, Deanna. Busted. Who you listen to? <laughs> hey, don't worry. As long as you're being fed. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at you. Whoever you listen to, as long as you're being fed, as long as you're being fed, that's the key. If you listen, I know you, many people listen to different Bible studies. So the point is being fed what needs to be fed. Amen, Deanna? But I love that part. Your, your daughter tried to tell you, you're on the wrong Bible study. <laughs> Amen. Sure, Sheila. I'm so blessed to be here. Amen. And see, you guys, you guys don't understand. You were handpicked as well. I didn't come looking for you guys. You were handpicked to be here in this fellowship at this point in time. Some people have left to come back. Some people were here the first three years and they're they're only watching the archives. Many people we've had come through, over several hundred people as far as as followers of live. And many people I mean, just the fact you got you could come here. Sometimes you're at work. Sometimes you're off. Your work schedule is crazy. Sometimes you guys are driving, like brother, brother, brother Greg. So I just thank God for each one of you who's driven to be here and have chosen to be here by the Holy Spirit. And see, you're not here by accident. Nobody is here in this fellowship by accident. And we're all here at this point in time for a reason in this season. Amen. Praise God. So thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Sheila. Amen. Deanna, it was a Sunday service. It was a Sunday service, and she didn't like him. <laughs> your, your daughter, your daughter didn't like him. Amen. Amen, Deanna. Praise God. Amen, Sheriff Don. So see, we understand. We we understand. As a fellowship, we, we to, to, just to be able, to be able to be driven to come together five or six days a week. That's, I told some people, I come on five or six days a week. I told you this two or three years ago. I tell people, I come on five or six days a week. And they say, five days a week? <laughs> they, were on, they were like in shock. You come on five days a week? You're teaching five days. I said, what's wrong with that? I mean, I mean, I mean, that's what the Holy Spirit told me to do. I'm not, I didn't choose to say, let me, let me go out and teach the word every day. That was, that was how I was guided to do that. I told you guys a story way back. I fell in love with sunrises and God told me to speak a word over sunrises every time I had to move my car. I had to move the car for 30 days. Every time I talked about the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, upload how much you love the Lord as you watch the sunrise. So I did it for 30 days until they finished the street. And by the end of 30 days, I had a following. People said, I'm so glad you come on every day. I hadn't planned to come on every day. I was doing once a month at the mission before Golden Nuggets, once a month. And then that season ended, and then I made a mistake. I said, Lord, what's next? And what, what God had next, from once a month 
to every day. <laughs> and I panicked at first. At first, I panicked because I said, man, what am I going to talk about? Every day, Lord? And I was like the people, every day? And then the Holy Spirit says, why worry? You're connected to the all-knowing, all-present, omnipresent, omnipotent. You are connected to one who knows everything. And you'll never run out of topics. You'll never run out of topics because I'm going to give you every topic. I said, wait a minute. Why am I worried? That's right. I'm connected to God. And he knows everything. And he's going to give me all the, all the lessons. So then I completely relaxed because now I knew God's going to give me everything I need to cover on this channel. Every recording, every lesson, every Worship Wednesday, all the things we do on this channel was guided by the Holy Spirit year after year. And we change some things over time. But each change is guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Uh, Glenda, we are, we are the chosen ones to be here by the Holy Spirit. Love it. And the Holy Spirit, obedience is key. Amen, Glenda. Amen. Sheriff Don, ministry, it was ministry. Oh, minister, it was your love for Christ and your spirit of peace and love that Christ works through you. And people who don't fear that, they're attached to your teaching style. Amen, Don. Thank you, Brother Don. And I'm just trying to get people to understand. All my all my years of teaching school, the one thing I brought from teaching school is understanding how many people would hear stuff and not understand it. And it happens with the Word of God. Many people hear the information and don't understand it. And many people in sermons, they'll get the sermon and have no idea how to apply it. So this is, this is every lesson here, everything on my channel is about leaving this channel with an understanding of how to apply the Word of God, how to live the Word of God. What good is the information if you don't know how to use it? If you can't apply it, what good is the information if you can't apply it because you don't understand it? And that is the driven purpose of all my lessons and this channel, to be able to have a place to leave with understanding and how to really live by the Word, how to live the Word and breathe the Word and do the Word every day. Amen. And that's that's the key. That's that's the whole motivation right there, of what and and see and wait and when when God gave me this in 2017, we started 2017 when He gave me this lesson after the mission had closed. He He gave me this mission also to save me, because I told you guys way back in 2014, I had a really bad back accident, and so it was really hard, really hard, even doing once a month with a bad back at a mission. But I was able to praise my way through it. I had, because I actually had to stand up there at a podium and, and I was praising God standing up and, and doing a sermon standing up and my back was killing me the whole time. So then God gave me an assignment where I'm sitting down every day <laughs> in the car at home. So he, he promoted me from standing up in the mission once a month to sitting down every day and teaching the word of God in no pain. <laughs> praise God. So. I was just being obedient and however God wants to use use me to use my teaching skills to help people understand. Because it's nothing more refreshing to see a person like Snurks and some of you, many of you, Snurks, Deanna, and several, Glenda, several of you have shared with me how you got a revelation during one of the lessons or something you heard in one of the lessons gave you an understanding how to change things in your life because now you understand it. That, that makes me feel so good with something that the Holy Spirit taught through me, gives you an understanding that you've been trying to figure out in your own life. And now you leave the lesson with that understanding of how to apply it in your life to fix whatever it was that was out of sync. Like like, uh, like Deanna said earlier, the, to let you understand that you didn't realize that mistreatment was not the reality. The mistreatment was in the wrong place. And then once you learned there was a better place, you were able to get straight to break free. You, Snurks and Deanna, they're both sisters. So so when you both understood the need to get away from that, that environment, you had the strength to break off. Once you learned there was a better place of peace, a better place of not mistreatment, a better place of God's love, a better place to love, just let, let the Lord just fill you with a joy instead of being mistreated. And that's why it felt so strange because you changed your reality. You changed reality from 
mistreatment to peace and joy of the Lord. And that's why I felt strange because you changed what you thought was reality. And now you wrote a new reality. And that, that new you is now living in the peace of God and the joy of the Lord re rejuvenating you and, and re-energizing. And many of us, each one of us here right now, have had those moments with God where, where he touches us in a certain ways to give us an understanding of, of fix this or fix that or get to the right place. Time to change. The Holy Spirit's always letting us know when to do something, how and, and where. So as long as we trust and obey, trust and obey the Holy Spirit will always be in the right place at the right time. Don't get ahead of the Holy Spirit. Don't get ahead of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you every step of the way and you'll never be in the wrong place because he knows exactly what we need before we even pray for it. He knows the plans. He knows the plans he has for each one of us. We don't. We have no idea exactly what the plans are, but God knows exactly the plan he has for each one of us. And the only way to get there is to listen to the Holy Spirit, guide you to where God wants you to be. Let the Holy Spirit guide you to where God wants you to be. And you'll be there as a blessing. And you'll love it because it'll be a part of you. And you'll love being there because he knows what you need. He knows your desires. And you'll be blessing people as well. So first of all, you'll love it. You're blessing people. And you're at peace doing it. So wherever God is taking you, it's going to be so great. Because he already knows your heart and what you're like. But because you're trusting him and you're obeying him, then he'll take you to a place where you love it. You're blessing people and just enjoying the peace of God because you're in the right place. And this whole lesson we're sharing right now is about understanding when you're in the wrong place and getting the right place. And maybe you've shared, as always, I always love your sharing because your sharing is always so, so great because others who watch later in archives, many times are touched by what you guys share right now. They watch the archives and they, they, some of you, some of them relate to what you said and, and or, or relate to what we're talking about. And they'll leave a comment and say, I'm, I'm so glad I, I'm so glad I heard this because I'm, I'm in the same place. Like, like, uh, like, a um, Sister Margo said earlier that she needed this because some of the stuff we're talking about applied to her life. So that's, that's what the lessons are all about, to be able to reach as many people as possible, to give them understanding in archives, the types of stuff we're talking about. On Kingdom Biz Thursday, and that's why Kingdom Biz Thursday is so great. And I appreciate you guys so much for being transparent and sharing. See, when we share and be transparent, that's when we pray for each other. Because we're being, we're sharing our our innermost desires or struggles, and then we get to pray for each other as we leave the place because we just shared, and that's the power of fellowship. Because we we know how to pray for each other in the fellowship by sharing, especially on Kingdom Biz Thursday. So that's what it is all about. Now, before I close, the last thing I want to just for us to remember as we continue, not just the next 20 days, but just for the rest of your life, people a lot of times don't think about the circle of friends around you. They get saved and they're focused on the word of God and they're praying, but they're not paying attention to who is in their circle. See, a lot of people don't think about the circle. They get saved and they're praying and they're shouting and they're giving and they're doing all the things right except paying attention to who is in your spiritual circle. Is everyone in your spiritual circle someone who needs to be there? Or do some people need to be removed because they're in the wrong circle because they're not in sync with what you believe and what you're trying to live for the Lord? And when you understand that part right there and are always able to monitor, is everyone in your circle supposed to be there? And if they're not, just graciously, graciously kind of move away from them to get your circle only with people who support you, who pray with you, who understand you because you're like-minded. And when you're like-minded, Everyone prays together. They worship together. And like we do right here, right here, you're here because we love to praise together. We love to pray together. 
and we love to share together. We're all like-minded right now in this fellowship. And that's what makes that's what makes this fellowship so powerful, because where two or more are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. And while we leave this place each day feeling refreshed, because the, the presence of the Lord is right here with us for an hour and a half, two hours, however long we go, each time we come together. And that's why this fellowship is so powerful and why we feel so good when we're in the presence of each other, praying together. And that's what fellowship is to, about, coming together with like-minded people to praise together, worship together, and just have a good time with the Lord together. And that makes sure your circle is complete with people who love the Lord, love to praise, love to pray, and love the Word of God. And that's what any fellowship is about. And that's what this one specifically is about. You know how much I love to praise. We, we praise like crazy. Crazy Praise Friday, Worship Wednesday, and a little bit of praise even on lesson days. Praise is both your tool. <clears throat> praise is both your tool and your weapon against, against the devil. <clears throat> praise is both your tool to get close to God and also your weapon to shut the devil up. So praise has a double-edged sword. Praise is both a tool and a weapon against the devil, but a tool to get closer to God because the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And that same praise shuts the devil up because <laughs> the devil is resisting the devil. When you praise, you resist the devil and he does what? Beep, beep, gone. The devil can't stand praise. The devil can't stand praise. The devil can't Stand or be around praise. So whenever you feel like you're under attack, start praising God. Whenever you feel like you're under attack, start praising God and watch what happens. Watch the heavens leave. Watch the depression leave. Worry, anxiety will leave because you're praising God. You're reconnecting. And that's what praise does. Praise is what we do. Amen. Praise is what we do day after day. And that's why I close. I want to thank you. I thank you guys so much. As always, thank you so much for sharing. I, I love our sharing part. And that's why we have so much fun on King Biz Thursday. So I want to thank you again, guys, for praying for my back and stuff. And let me give you very close. Father God, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, right now, Lord. And praise God. The bubbles are back, family. The, the, the app is fixed. The bubbles are back. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God for the bubbles. All the effects are back. Uh, even my party, our party light is back. Amen. So that's a first, another victory. Praise God. Another victory on day 20. All the, the effects on the app are back. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you right now, Father God, for another great day together. Another great day of praise and jazz. Another great day of sharing and keeping the best thirsty, Lord. Lord, bless each person for their sharing. And even those who didn't share, Lord, bless each person who is affected by what we talked about and what we shared. Bless each person listening live or archive. They may be leaving this lesson today with an understanding of how to make sure they are surrounded by the right people, Lord, in their spiritual circle, Lord. Lord, give each one of us discernment from day to day to make sure anyone, anyone in our circle should really be there. Give us discernment and understanding, Lord, and revelation, Lord, of whatever it is we need to do to make sure our spiritual circle is exactly what it should be. And right now, Father God, I pray in agreement in this corporate prayer, Lord. I pray this corporate prayer over the fellowship, Lord. I stand in agreement with every prayer request on the heart of each fellowship member right now, live archive. Prayers for family, prayers for healing, for change. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, on the heart of each fellowship member, that every fellowship member's prayer request shall come to pass. The fervent prayers of the righteous avails much. Hear our prayer, O Lord. And Father God, as we continue to come together as a fellowship, five days, six days a week, Lord, daily we pray not only for world peace, but daily we pray for a supernatural hedge of protection to be over everybody, Lord, to protect us from any hurt, harm, and danger from unexpected shootings, accidents, natural disasters, or violence of any kind, Lord. Lord, we pray for, Lord, we pray for healing, Lord, a supernatural healing over the pandemic, variants, and other disease, Lord. 
We pray for our leaders for justice, for change. We pray, Lord, for you to continue to wave your mighty hand over the spiritual rebellion, division, racism, and hatred as we commit as a fellowship to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways. So you are here from heaven. Forgive our sins and heal our land. All these things we ask, all these things we ask. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And before we close, I know someone may be watching first time or maybe a few times who doesn't understand why this fellowship is always on fire. We come together five or six days a week. Haven't never met physically, but knowing we all love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. But someone listening right now doesn't understand this kind of fellowship. So right now, I'm going into closing prayers and the prayer of salvation. As always, please, no typing until after closing prayers. Anything typed during the prayers is deleted. I respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to someone listening. And you heard the praise in the beginning. And you heard the praise and the worship. And you heard the sharing and testimonies. But right now, you're having trouble connecting. You're having trouble praying. Because right now, your life is falling apart. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Families turning away from you. Friends stabbing you in the back. And you may even feel like giving up on life itself right now. Yet somehow, you find yourself on this channel. And you have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. Because God sees what you're going through right now, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and that is why you're here right now. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to sin. And now your life is really falling apart. Because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil's telling you once you leave God or fail God, you can never go back. And that right there is the lie of the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and then you fell back into sin, there's nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life. Recommit your life to Christ. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So right now, if you're backsliding, you want to come back to the Lord. Or right now, your life is filled with depression and darkness and hopelessness. Or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Either way, right now, I want you to pray with me. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. Right now, I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. And I can admit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without giving you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything not like you. In Jesus' name. Now, if you pray that prayer sincerely, your spirit is right to see the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and also convict, convict us will not walk God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day, not just every Sunday, every day. Spend time with God. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith and starve it out every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life, which is, God let you know, it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Next step is to repent. And repent means change your ways from simple ways to God's ways. And again, the more time you spend with God every day, the stronger you get. And next thing you know, you turn away from simple things you used to do. And instead, seek God's will, God's way, according to his word. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship, rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, 
revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, name a name seen unseen, may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. We cast all you demonic spirits out of mind, our spirit, our home, our kids, our marriages, back to the pit of hell for which you all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord, restore every area of our life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord, bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep your protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose a supernatural healing, physical, spiritual, and emotional healing by your stripes are healed. And Lord, every day we confess, every day we confess, Lord, I believe I receive my healing. In Jesus' name, I believe I receive my healing. In Jesus' name, every day, confess it and thank him. Confess it and thank him every day. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose a supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, a supernatural debt cancellation, Lord. Lord, it's your best, Lord. Your best of abundance, Lord. Rain down, Lord. Rain down on the first and financial need, whatever it is. For you supply all our need according to your riches and glory of Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not for anything, but the Lord is my shepherd. Let's say this part together in fellowship. Repeat after me. For I am the head, not the tail. I am above, not beneath. I am the lender, not the borrower. I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. I'm blessed that I may be a blessing to others. I am out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I am a child of God. And nothing shall by any hurt me or block my blessings in any way. In Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, finally, we thank you, Lord, for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle to pray for right now. And now we know everything, Lord. Every day we take time to see the miracle. Every day, take time and visualize your miracle in detail. See it, believe it, and then receive it in your heart. And as you receive it in your heart, expect it. Walk in expectancy. Expect your miracle every day day. We don't know the when. We never know the exact when, but because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, any day you wake up, could be a day of the manifestation of the miracle prayer for right now, so expect your miracle every day. The Lord bless you keep your family. The Lord make his face shine upon you and grace on you. The Lord says his face of divine approval upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing if you touch and speak to. A blessing to everyone you pray for. A blessing to everyone you pass by and bless. With open your mouth because the love and light of the Lord is all over you. 24 7, 365, including leap here. So, Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask in the name of Jesus we pray. And the fellowship say, Amen. 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 Thank you.